Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Rude Runner Sports. And today we're taking a look at the Kinvara Pro from Saucony. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Rude Runner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. This is the Kinvara Pro from Saucony, and as someone who takes a look at a lot of different running shoes, I'm quite confused by the naming convention. For example, we have the Kinvara 14 over here in the corner. This is a low drop, lightweight, neutral daily trainer, and that really doesn't really kind of compare to the Kinvara Pro at all. It doesn't really share many similarities whatsoever. So we'll put the Kinvara 14 back in the corner because honestly, like I said before, Kinvara Pro is a completely different setup and experience. The other confusing thing for me was they added the word pro to the name, implying that the Kinvara Pro is a top tier racing super shoe. And that is not the case. This is a plated daily trainer and that's what Saucony designed it to be. So the naming convention is a little bit confusing, but at the end of the day, this is a plated daily trainer that could potentially be a race day shoe for some runners just because of how aggressive that carbon fiber plate makes the midsole compared to a conventional daily trainer. The Kinvara Pro costs $180 and weighs 9.5 ounces, which is pretty good for a typical daily trainer, although rather heavy for the plated daily trainer category or super trainers as they are calling them now, a category that's really kind of blown up here in the last few years. As far as stack height goes, this is the thickest sock in the shoe ever as of, I believe, July 2023 with 42 millimeters in the heel, 34 in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop which is four more millimeters compared to the Kinvara. Kinvara uh, 14 has a four millimeter drop. So Kinvara Pro eight millimeter drop with one of the highest stack heights that Sacony has ever made. The upper is a very thin and very breathable engineered mesh, which I do appreciate here in these warmer months. You have some mini rubberized plastic overlays across most of the upper to give it a little bit more texture and support. I will say the fit is true to size and I thought it was rather accommodating. The tongue is gusseted with large strips of engineered mesh on the lateral and medial side to keep it in place. And as far as the padding goes, it is rather minimal. There's not a whole lot here, although I thought it worked quite well and did a decent job of keeping the lace pressure off. Moving to the back of the shoe, about an average amount of padding in the ankle and Achilles area. You have a moderately stiff heel counter. And I thought the lockdown and fit of the Kinvara Pro was spot on and feels very much like a sock in the upper, if you will. Kind of similar to something like uh, the Ride 16, the Speed 3, or the Triumph. Uh, funny enough, the only upper I really don't like from Saucony is on the Kinvara 14. A little bit of heel slip there, kind of a little bit of a sloppy fit, but not the case here on the Kinvara Pro. Spot on, again, feels very much like a Saucony upper. And as a funny side note, the pull tab is kind of very tight. It's kind of hard to get your finger under. Kind of elastic band at the top, or at the back, I should say. Didn't really use it just because it is so tight against the heel counter itself. The Kinvara Pro actually has almost every single running shoe foam that Saucony has available, starting with the insert, which is Power Run plus a TPU-based material. It's really dense and a little bit heavier. You see it on the Triumph, that's the entire midsole, but Saucony does this with a lot of their running shoes. So I have this very thick, very plush Power Run plus insert. It gives you just a tad bit more cushioning compared to the typical running shoe insert. And if we move on to the midsole, we have a dual density setup here. We have a top layer of foam, which is Power Run PB, a PBAX based foam. We see it on the Speed 3 and the Pro 3, which is one of Saucony's lightest and bounciest compounds. It's also rather durable, also very light. And then below that, we have Power Run EVA based foam, which is a bit more traditional. We see that on the Ride 16, which is going to be a bit more firm. And sandwiched in between these two layers of foam is a three-fourths length carbon fiber plate. So the plate doesn't go the entire length of the shoe. It only goes from about the midfoot forward, which kind of helps you notice the curved geometry towards the front, which Saucony calls their speed roll technology. If you flip the shoe over, you could actually see that carbon fiber plate with the cutout. And since we had the shoe flipped over, let's talk about the outsole, which has no rubber whatsoever, which I think is quite funny because even the Kinvar 14 has a little bit of rubber in the heel and toe section, which I wish they would potentially add here of the Kinvara Pro, mainly because I'm already starting to see some wear here on this Power Run foam rubberless outsole. 
Now, I personally didn't have any issues with traction. I think my primary concern here is I'm already starting to see some wear and I think some strategic rubber or maybe just a thin layer of rubber would really solve that. But it really didn't necessarily hinder the performance. I am just a little bit worried for the longevity considering this is a trainer and not necessarily a true top tier racing shoe. In my experience, I thought this was a relatively stable Ultramax Cushion Neutral Daily Trainer and big part to that bottom layer of foam being Power Run and EVA foam, which makes things a bit firmer and just a little bit more inherently stable. Although the Kinvara Pro is not as soft or as bouncy compared to the Endorphin Speed or the Endorphin Pro with their full Power Run PB midsoles, I am quite happy with this triple foam setup. Yes, it's a bit firmer, but it provides an excellent level of cushioning and I thought it was just insanely comfortable. And in my opinion, I think this works better kind of towards the slower to medium paced efforts. If you want to pick up the pace, then take a look at the Speed or Pro. But I think for a typical daily trainer that really rolls you along nicely with that very stiff and aggressive carbon fiber plate, I'm quite happy with the Kinvara Pro performance. It's very confused when it first came out just because it was the Pro and the naming convention like we talked about before and how it fit into the Saucony lineup but I think it works quite well and kind of takes the place of like the endorphin shift. I think that's kind of a little bit less fun of a ride and this kind of just completely replaces that as more of just a typical daily trainer with a rather aggressive rocker geometry. So what would I change about this shoe? Well, the first thing is the weight, 9.5 ounces. I would try to bring that down a bit, maybe remove some of the power run foam, replace it with a little bit more power run PB, try to find a little bit more of an energetic balance. I would also add some rubber to the outsole to help the overall durability. But other than that, I think they kind of got it dialed in. I really like the upper, and I think this is an excellent first go for the Ginvara Pro. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think of this new shoe, and how do you think it kind of fits into the broader Saucony lineup? I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan for Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.